We're going to look at the set of permutations on the set one, two, three, and we're going to see if this is a group, if the set of permutations meets all the criteria, all the group axioms that are required to be considered a group. And those are the associative property, a closure, having identity elements, and having inverses in the group for all the elements. Okay? So the set of permutations are the identity map. So that's the clue that we do have an identity element. The one that just maps them all back to themselves. Um, one, two, three. What happened there? Anyway, one, three, two. Uh, one, two, one, three, and two, three. And that is all of them. Um, and the operation we're considering, so when we're looking at groups, we can't just consider a set. For example, when we consider the set of integers, that, that is nothing but well it's, it's a set but it's not a group but when we consider integers under addition or under multiplication we can look at whether the whether that's a, a group or not okay so we need to define some sort of binary operation and in this case we are going to define uh, the binary op operation as composition and we, we looked at that and we defined that in a previous video um, so I'm going to assume you know how to compose two permutations permutations but if you don't go check out that video otherwise a lot of this isn't going to make any sense so an identity element is an element that under the binary operation maps elements to themselves so for example in our set here we have the element one two three clearly is the one that's going to keep all the other permutations the same because when we go up to our composition we go one to two two goes to itself Okay, so that gives us one, two, two goes to three, three goes to itself, three goes to one, one goes to itself. So there you go, it's kept that the same, and it will do that if you compose from either side. So that's an identity element. Uh, closure, well, we don't really even have to go through this. If you compose two uh, uh, permutations from permutations on the set one, two, three, you're going to get another permutation that's set one, two, three. There's no possible way that can map you to four or five or six, seven or so on. Okay, you have to remain in that set. So closure is is obvious in this case. Uh, inverses, well, we're just going to go through and find the inverses for each of these. So the inverse is is a an element in the set that under the binary operation returns the identity element. Okay, so. What we're looking for for each of these permutations is another permutation in, in the set that when we compose them, we're going to return the identity and then those two elements are the inverse of each other. Um, so for the identity itself, its inverse is itself. Okay, so it's already the identity, so we want to keep it the same. So that's an identity and we're just going to, we're just going to tick them off as we go when we found there identity maps um, if we take one two three and compose that with one three two one goes to three three goes to one so that remains itself two goes to one one goes to two so that remains the same and three goes to two and two goes to three so there we go so now and you can try this on the other side and it does work so we found the inverse of this element and this element for the remaining elements, they actually all turn out to be the inverse of themselves. So if we look here, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, 2 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2, and 3 stays itself, 3 stays itself. Okay, brilliant. Um, and you can do the same with these, and they, they're the inverse of themselves as well. Now, associativity is the final property, and that is that if we can compose the... Um, these permutations so let me represent the permutations by sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 if we do sigma 1 first compose with sigma 2 and then compose that with sigma 3 that is equivalent to sigma 1 compose with sigma 2 compose with sigma 3 okay in that order that that's what associativity means and we can assume that this composition is associative because composition of functions is associative. Okay, so that's my, my reason, uh, not composition of functions, composition of mappings. Composition of mappings is associative, so 
this comp composition of permutations also happens to be associative. So that is that if we have mappings F, G and H, then F, um, F composed with G composed with H of X is equal to F composed with G composed with H of X. And this makes a lot more sense written down than when I say it, because it does just sound like I just said the same thing twice. But hopefully you can see the point I'm getting at here. So we have associativity, we have closure, we have inverses, and we have identity. So this is a group, and we call this group S3. And if you want to know more about these types of group, then you need to look up um, symmetric groups of order N. And you can find out a lot more about these groups. And we'll be going into some of that on this channel. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. We've got plenty of maths content coming up. And if you want anything covered or you find anything interesting, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get on that as quickly as I can. Uh, so like I say, thanks for watching. Um, any support on the channel is much appreciated. And I hope to see you in the next video.